We just gotta get it to the top of this. Ready? Okay, keep going. Keep going. Go, 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 go. Not gonna happen. I can't believe I fucking forgot to buy gas. How much further? Eighth of a mile. Nah, that's not bad. I mean, just given that it's 50 years old, I mean, I wager there's probably half a million miles on it. And the guy who owned it before me was, uh, he owned it for 40 years. He was an 80 year old dude and uh, was tired of working on it. So, but he was a total stereotypical, like deadhead hippie dude who traveled in it for 40 years and went to concerts. And he's a harmonica player, so he smoke pot and play harmonica and with whoever he could, you know. So it's got a lot of miles on it. <laughs> Actually when I bought the van, uh, he wanted to bring it out. You know, he wanted to come out to my property and like see his van off and have like one great, one night in his van, you know, left. So he like he came out to the property and like like I said he was a harmonica player so we both we both love and like like Hank Williams a lot so like I got on my guitar and we played a bunch of Hank Williams songs and sang Hank Williams and we had, I had a I had a jug of moonshine at the time and we got real drunk he like killed it on the harmonica you know and then he and then he, I think then he was like all right cool like see the van off you know. I mean, even buying the van, like he had offers for more money than what I paid for it, but he said I was the first person that he like wanted to have the van. So he sold it to me for cheaper than he had other offers for it, you know. He did, he did uh, kind of ride into the contract though that he had visitation rights. <laughs> He'd come hang out whenever he wanted to in his van. <laughs> Come on. Nah. Fucking gas. It's happened when your gas gauge doesn't work. We could have Jamel push us. Do I try again? Sandwiches pretty soon.
listening to the entire like Woody Guthrie discography for a couple days. Yeah. What is it? What are these guys? Well, I don't know. We gotta find out. That's tequila. <laughs> That's gin. That's nothing. That's whiskey. Look, Jamil bought me this. Thumbbeat Distillery, local Prescott whiskey. Which I guess it's about time. Green water is better than tap water. Oh yeah, you boys are from Phoenix. You guys are easy to satisfy. Is that a jar of Nutella? Yeah, I have about. Yeah, we have like a lifetime supply of that. Huh? I'm sponsored by uh, by who? World do you want to put this on film? By the world market. Uh, do you want to you want to present sponsored it? Sponsored by the world market dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> Lifetime supply of Nutella. No, you're not. Are you really? By the dumpster? Fuck yeah. Oh, by the, dump by, by the, the dumpster. By the dumpster. dumpster. Oh, oh, I'm oh I got you. Sponsored by dumpsters nationwide, man. Hey, Steve, what's your shits. new what's your nutrition sponsor? The dumpster. Fucking f all the free nutrition you can get. There's always, there's such weird shit around here, like that. Yeah, like weird, like I would never buy this Hawaiian mango habanero. <laughs> Maybe I would actually. I <laughs> More portobellos. I like the turkey had to go with that one. Fucking moose. Just learn how to share that fucking turkey. Whole meal. Cheers, boys. Uh, where did you think of Whiskey Man? Like, where did that come up? Where did that idea come from? Jamil told Jamil thought of it and told me about it. <laughs> the Whiskey Basin Run and the Circle Trail race, i.e., the Circle Trail race, is a race. It's the most obvious race in the world and because it's like a done loop, like it's a 50 mile loop around Prescott and it's done and it's maintained and it's awesome. So when the trail was finally com completed, <laughs> uh, when the trail was finally completed, uh, well, the circumference of the trail is... <laughs> What's that? What's the diameter if you divide by pi? Prescott circumference trail. It's a 16 diameter cir circle trail. <laughs> pi r squared. <laughs> oh, right, thank right, God. Okay. We got, okay. Through. <laughs> we got through that one. <laughs> it's the most obvious trail in the world because it's a bunch of high use trails that run around Prescott. They're all linked up. They're all super awesome. They're all super maintained. Prescott is actually super savvy and super supportive of trails um we have a f full time trail like he's the guy's on salary and he has a whole crew that works for the city of prescott and they go around and just build trails that's all that they do um so i mean i i run a lot and i run a lot in prescott and it seems like almost every other time i go out i see a new trail that i've never seen before that's just been blazed and uh, anyway, so the, the circle trail is a great thing. It circumnavigates Prescott. It's, it's, uh, like I said, it's a lot of the high use, easy access trails, which is great for a lot of people. And, uh, especially for mountain bikers, they really love getting on it, but every bit is amazing for runners as well. 
Um, but even before the mi mountain bike thing, Prescott has a long equestrian history. So there's a lot of, just like the Mountain Bike Alliance, there's a lot of similar organizations with horses and uh, equestrians. And so there's always been tons of trails in Prescott that the trail runner can easily take advantage of. So um, <laughs> it's always been sort of a secret unknown mecca of trail running with that people of that trail runners have never really exploited and that's kind of the double-edged sword of this race is I'm super stoked and I'm super awesome to <clears throat> finally have an ultra and finally have a race in my hometown and the place where I live but also it's kind of like giving away my secret candy stash you know and um but <clears throat> it's totally worth it and it's totally awesome and I feel like the Prescott race can definitely become an instant classic race um, so the whiskey man idea was a very the one when first talking to Jamil about the race I mean given that Jamil and I are on the same running team and I live in Prescott he owns Air Viper running uh, <clears throat> since he's the one organizing the race and he's been trying to organize the race for years now but it's finally happening with the completion of the circle trail um, <clears throat> one of the reasons that we had talked about having it in the springtime and not in the fall is to have it at the same relative time as the whiskey off-road 50 mile bike race and the whiskey row marathon with the intention of one day maybe combining them into a s separate kind of cumulative event of combined time and you run all three races some years they're one week apart some this year i think they're two weeks apart and um but it'd be a cool prescott recreation thing um to compete in all three races and see how fast you can do all three races and, and i mean multi-discipline which is cool and So yeah, that, that weighed pretty heavily, I think, on the decision to have it in April and not October or whatever. And, um, and we've been in small relative contact with both of the races and they both seem to be on board for future years once it becomes a little more official. And so I'll do it this year and hopefully next year it'll be popular. There's something to do for Prescott. So, one thing I've, uh, I've always talked about Prescott is um, Prescott doesn't have the best any sort of trail out there. Um, like it obviously doesn't have the best mountain trails. It obviously doesn't have the best desert trails in the world. It obviously doesn't have whatever, like the best slick rock trails in the world. But on one run in an afternoon, I can be, I can be in Alpine country and running in firs and spruce trees and on the same run I can run down and be in the desert and be in saguaros and be in choya cactus and on that same run I can head over and be on slick rock trails running along lakes and so the diversity of Prescott trails is is incredible I mean and that that doesn't even require a long run really I mean you can go on a 10 mile run and be in like four different biomes all, all on the same run so i mean and i mean i feel like myself and a lot of people from arizona especially locals from arizona certainly pride themselves on diversity i mean that's what arizona is all about i mean the arizona trail is only 800 miles long i mean i say only because when you compare it to like pacific crest trail the appalachian trail but at 800 miles you hit so much more diversity in that trail than you do on any of those other trails and Prescott is kind of a micro Arizona in that way and that you can hit so many different types of trails so many like I said being in the pine trees the spruce trees being on slick rock being in the desert like whatever you want to do you can go out and do and you can get the variety of running that you want to be be in I mean, there's also, there's so many, beyond the National Forest Trails, there's so many social trails and there's so many unmarked javelina paths and deer paths that like, like I go running on terrain 
significantly, significantly, significantly more technical than any sky race out there around Prescott. And it's trail. And at the same time, you can run on like the Peavine Trail or 332, the old trail bed, which is super flat and super non-technical. Like you can do pretty much anything you want to do around here. Um, which is great. I uh, like, I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about like Flagstaff. I love running in Flagstaff and I run, I love the culture up there and they have better mountain running trails than, than, than we have. But Flagstaff doesn't have the diversity that we have, you know, anywhere out in the desert, you know, it's better desert trails, but they don't have the diversity that we have. And it's pretty amazing for that to be able to do that. And it's year round running, you know, I mean, it's summertime, you could stay by the creeks and stay in the trees and run through the trees. And wintertime, you hit to the slick rock, super exposed and sunny and 50 degrees out in the wintertime. And it's perfect running, you know, year round. So it's a good place. The Whiskey Man, the Whiskey Man Challenge uh, is, given that this is the first year of the Whiskey Basin Trail Runs and the Circle Trail, ultra run the whiskey man race will consist of first running the 54 mile circle trail um, depending on the year and depending on the schedules either one week or two weeks after that is the the whiskey off-road 50 mile bike race um, and then again, depending on the schedules, either a week or two weeks after that, running the Whiskey Row Marathon, which like all marathons is 26.1 miles. Uh, what differentiates the Whiskey Row Marathon from most marathons is that it's running at an elevation from five to 7,000 feet um, and has a cumulative gain of around 4,000 feet and is primarily on dirt roads. Um, so it's definitely a trail runners marathon if there is one. Um, the Whiskey Basin Trail Run, uh, like I said, the full the full circle is on the Circle Trail. The bike race utilizes portions of the Circle Trail, but also utilizes uh, other trails that are not part of the Circle Trail, and also has an out and back down to Skull Valley and back, which is on Jeep Road. Um, and that's what differentiates the 50 mile bike ride from the 30 mile bike ride is the out and back down to Skull Valley. Um, the Whiskey Row Marathon, like I said, is run mostly on dirt roads. Um, so it's not actually on trails at all. Um, but I think the Whiskey Row Marathon shares some of the same course, the Jeep roads and whatnot as the bike race. Um, and I would say all three of the races are great courses, are definitely worth every bit, every mile is definitely worth doing, um, but the circle trail, I mean, I'm obviously biased towards trails, so the circle trail really hits, I think, um, some of the coolest portions of the trails of, of all three routes. The bike race hit some really cool stuff too that neither the Whiskey Basin trail runs or the marathon hit. Um, but I mean, there's so many trails here, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to say exactly. There's so many options and there's so many trails here that turkey that when you walk into the grocery store and you pick up a packet of lunch meat 
It's like a full grown, it's not like a wild turkey, it's like a full grown domestic, like male, plumed, decorative fucking turkey. I haven't, I haven't slept past 6.30 since I've had it. It's just like every morning on the sunrise. Just like fucking non-stop. Like. Oh yeah. The, the, the problem, I think I can run this course in sub eight. I mean, when Chad, when Chad and I ran it unsupported, we ran it in 7.45. But the, the last section of trail wasn't in yet. Uh, so it's a little bit longer now. It's a couple miles longer, but I figure with, with support and aid station and a race and a race environment. So call call it eight hour eight hour ultra, three hour whiskey roll marathon. That's eleven hours. That leaves me five hours for the bike ride. And I have no idea how long the bike ride is going to take. Like it's a complete question mark. It's a complete like. The problem with the bike ride too is that there's so many people who do the bike ride that uh, they have severe, like severe bottlenecks, like uh, up to an hour in certain sections. As of right now, there's about 200 people signed up, and uh, the majority, I would say 90% of them, are not from Prescott. So it's out of towners, so they're definitely, I think, going to be looking to go out. Thanks. 1932. Oh, yeah, that's one. Good mark. How you feeling? Yeah. I'm not really a morning guy. No. no. I'll warm up here though in a couple of hours.
one? Yeah. I'll throw it away from you. This is actually a little bigger. In here. Your water. Yeah. Yeah. You're the sandwich queen. Yeah. Something else? Good. Anything to eat? <coughs> or put oh, stuff in your pocket? Hopefully, that's my one low point. We'll see. Yay! <laughs> it's gonna be awesome up ahead. View of the whole basin. It's for you to say. <laughs> Can I get a Superman pose for you, Cornel? <laughs> give me a good one. Come on, give me a good one. Yeah. Thank you. Kill it, man. Kill it. It's super annoying. I feel good. I feel fine. It's just my stomach. All right, man, I'll see you later. Oh, give you a fill. We got, we want water. Ten. Ten, thank you. The two worst parts for me were the cold water section and that last bit were like my two, two low points. I ran a really good 50k, like the gold water, like it was like right on. I think I was two minutes off my like gold time to get there and then it just, it was super frustrating too. Like I was really frustrating because like I felt really good, like my legs don't fine like energy levels are good everything's good except stomach which is so unpredictable you know? it has every potential to be a classic race the course is awesome if I had to describe it to other like 
competitive runners. I would say it's basically like a Rocky Sonoma. Um, it's very similar to Sonoma in the up and downs and the hills. And a lot of it's like, I, I'm gonna go on record and say that I think it's longer than 54 too. I was Because there's a so many hairpin turns, like right in a row, like over and over again throughout the course. And GPSs don't pick that stuff up, you know. Okay. You owe me from all the tequila. Oh, so you we'll see what the... I got so unmotivated, like when I found out I wasn't going to get hit, get eight hours. And then every, every aid station I came into, they're like, oh, don't worry about it. Those guys are way behind you. It's like, so unmotivated. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, alright, I'm just going to walk then. <laughs> Hardest one's out of the way though. The hardest one's out of the way though. It's downhill from here, it gets easier. Yeah, yeah, way to PR in the first 50k, boss. Way to like do okay for the next four miles, crushing it. And then my body was like, hey, done. Um, let's think about this. And so I like got in a really good rhythm until 40, and right as I made that left turn, it was like, nah. Fuck you, you're done. <laughs> Go ahead and try to walk down this. Oh, you can't? And this is the rockiest part of the course? Dope. All right. Uh, don't hurt yourself. So, so next up, 100K. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I hate rent. I fucking hate paying rent, man. Paying rent is like the worst thing ever. I just can't do it so I mean there's a lot of reasons why I do the things I do and why I live the way I do but I mean off the top of my head I mean living rent free is great and the idea of rent and paying rent every month month prevents a lot of people from doing the things that they wish that they did in their life and it may not be that simple but a lot of times I think it might be you know, just the idea that they have to pay rent and they have to work to do that. And, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like I think I'm doing anything like special or cool out here. I mean, really it just boils down to, I don't want to, I don't want to pay money every month to live somewhere. And I've developed a certain amount of skills in my life to be able to build things and be able to, you know, support myself and, uh, so I got super lucky and came across a piece of property and bought it. And I, I honestly feel like this place is what has enabled me to live the lifestyle that I have for the last indefinite amount of time. You know, I spent a lot of time traveling every year. I spent a lot of time doing things that I really love doing and I feel super blessed and super awesome and super lucky that I'm able to do that but I wouldn't I feel like I wouldn't be able to do it without this place and that certainly doesn't come without trade-offs like you guys have been drinking rainwater for the you know all night um you know there are lights and we're listening to music and whatnot but that's relatively new you know I lived I lived for a long time out here without electricity and um I still don't have hot water, you know? I don't have a way of taking hot showers unless it's in the middle of the day and the water in the pipes is hot, <laughs> you know? like So it, there are definitely like creature comforts that I don't have, but it's totally worth it to me to... And I, I also, I feel like I'm kind of an egomaniac in a certain way and, and I don't like living in other people's houses and I feel like I feel like I, I have to like build the house I live in kind of and I know that may not make sense to a lot of people or but I, I, I have a certain pride in even if it's small it's super small scale out here you know I mean you guys know but it's I have, I have a certain pride in that, that that I did that that I built that and that's mine and like you know I don't pay rent to have that like I built it and it's fine like there's a lot of pride that comes with that and it's worth it trading off for those creature comforts and um, on top of all of that like I said it enables me to be a bum for 
half the year, you know, and travel around and I can support myself, you know, because I have no overhead. And that's my key, like no overhead and travel and run and climb and be a stereotypical dirt bag and, you know, and just not, not. <laughs> never mind. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that word, should not a, not a, not a dirt bag runner, but an actual, yeah. serious athlete pretty happy with like how little you have to prepare to ride a bike I figured it out that I think yesterday was or the day before yesterday was my like eighth time ever on a mountain bike <laughs> this before? Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Was he right? <laughs> I was getting made fun of because like the other day I was out riding and I like on the turns I like put my foot out, you know, like, on, a, like, on a dirt bike or something. It's some, it's, I understand why they're doing, they're worried about congestion, but it totally undermines the point of like what a race is. Like, like it inherently undermines what a race is. Like, they're like, oh, just go whatever way you want. They said, if you so. want a faster time, we'll take this route. Well, who would yeah. want a slower time? Right, but then, it, but then it's like, you walk away from it, it's like, oh, well, I didn't do the longest one. I did like the shorter one. All right, time to go kick everybody's ass. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. See you over there.
feel like I'm doing so good and I'm in like 200 clicks. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm doing way better than I thought I was going to. Nice. What time is it? Um, 10.17 right now. right now. <laughs> there are a lot of people out there with whiskey. I did it, man. Two down. Let's do the marathon right now. I did really fucking good. Like, way better than I thought I was going to do. But by the time you guys saw me on that last section, the alcohol had just taken over. And that was like... The race went really awesome. Uh, I was definitely looking forward to this one out of the three, like the least. I mean, m mainly because I'm, you know, obviously a runner and not a mountain biker. But I had more, I had more fun today than I have had at, like, in recent memory at any races. And uh, it went really well. I surprised myself, kind of. I'm not a very good mountain biker, you know, so I surprised myself how well I did on the technical sections and. Uh, it went great. I mean, I started training for this race last weekend. I mean, Whiskey Basin was two weeks ago. Uh, so I kind of laid low for a week, and then last weekend I picked up the bike. And um, I definitely do not have a lot of experience on a mountain bike on technical trails. I think, yeah, I don't have obviously a lot of experience, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, it went it went fine it went great I mean the the mountain bike culture compared to the ultra running culture is is huge I mean it's it's it, it's way bigger it's way more popular there's way more people that do it there's way more sponsors there's way more money there's way more everything so especially with this race like this race in Prescott has turned into one of the biggest national mountain biking races so it draws everything like like in like a comparative thing to ultra running, I feel like you would either have to go to, you know, like we were saying earlier, you would either have to go to Leadville or you would have to go to Europe to get this kind of atmosphere in an ultra. So it's, you know, the expo and all the booths and all the people and all the just people out on the course, you know, lots of people out on the course, the energy the you know, it's, it's different than ultra running. <laughs> Uh, my kit here exists of a mountain bike and two water bottles and a bag for stuff and gels and whatnot and that's about it. Yeah. I didn't have to provide any of my own alcohol which is great. There were plenty of people <laughs> that had that. I definitely drank more whiskey today than I did water which I don't know if that's good or not but <laughs> last year's Whiskey Road Marathon I lost terribly by four seconds in a sprint finish, uh, which I'm not used to, but three years ago I got second, two years ago I got first, last year I got second, so it's my turn to win again. And you can tell Adam 
but I said that. Because he's coming back this year, the guy who beat me last year. I mean, I've talked to a lot of people in town, out of town, I've done a lot of interviews, and I've, and the first question is always about the whiskey man. It's not about any individual race, it's not about anything else, it's always like, I mean, even out on the course today, I mean, I probably got 20 different times people yelling out, hey, it's the whiskey man, you know, or like, hey, are you the whiskey man? Are you doing the whiskey man? It's like, yeah, like, you know, and so people are, people are into it, you know, people like it, people like the idea, like locals or non-locals, and uh, I feel like we've planted a seed and we've set a president and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna happen. I feel like, you know, it's going to be successful and it's going to be something that people are into. So. No, I didn't run at all until a few years ago. Um, the very first ultra I ran was in 2013, I think. Or no, I think it was at the end of 2012. And I ran one of Jamil's races down in Phoenix, McDowell Mountain, Frenzy. It was a 50K. And I had literally gone on my first run, like, ever, besides, like, run, being forced to run the mile in middle school and PE, like, I think three months before that. So, what is that? I've been running maybe, like, four years now. Um, now I, I don't want it. I don't want to imply that like like I, I was I was generally fit before I started running. You know I was I was kind of a mountaineer and I, I I would do a lot of long distance backpacking trips and climbing trips and this and that. So I was generally fit. You know so I took to the sport very quickly and I was able to do it fairly easily. Um, but. I mean, that first ultra is still, I mean, I, given that every 50K I've run since then has been like a sky race, but that's still the fastest I've ever run a 50K was <laughs> that first first race I ever did. So, um, And I, I can't really say why I started. I can't, I actually don't, I have a hard time with this question because I don't actually really remember why I started running or what spurred it and... Um, I want to say that, uh, yeah, I don't know, actually, what caused it. I know I didn't, I, I know I didn't, I never thought of myself as a runner until, uh, I still don't know if I do, but I never, I never thought of myself as certainly a competitive runner until... You know, I traveled around a little bit, and I, you know, you do you do kind of well at a couple of races, and all of a sudden, oh, like I won a race, like that's kind of weird. Maybe I should start taking it seriously. And then the moment you start taking it seriously, then you just do terrible. You just do awful, and you know, and um, so the evolution is kind of weird. I I don't really have anything profound to say about it other than than. I didn't do it out of any sort of like profound reason or anything like that. I just kind of took to it and it just it just fit perfectly. It satisfied a lot of aspects of my personality. Like I think I've I've always had a aspect of my personality of like when I do something I have to do it like way too extreme or maybe it's just an obsessive part of my personality that I have to like push that kind of limits or whatever and um, so when I started running, it was like, oh, like, I just, I have to run a hundred miles, you know, or I have to like try and do that. Or... When I think about yesterday, my, oh my, my, oh my. And so I did
Meet me at the outhouse up here. Okay. This is terrible, man. What's going on from the start? It's been really rough. I gotta turn this around, man. I was hurting at mile two, like I didn't feel good today. And I could tell running with him the first the half marathon, like he was moving so much easier than I was. Like he like he I, I could just tell he was good. I like I knew I didn't have it today, especially on the second half. And like I, I mostly just put it in cruise control and just cruised all like that second half because I wasn't really able to push. And I'm like <laughs> A minute slower, two minutes slower than last year. I already got it dirty. I knew that. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It might be a little big. Probably. I feel like I need to be dreaming how to do three events in a row, like, you know, and how to do them well. So, I don't know if, if the other two events affected me today. Um, I can't say, I don't know enough about my, myself and the science behind it, so. Do I do know that out of the four years I've run it, today was the slowest I've run it, so. I mean, I'm certainly not gonna blame those other two events. Um, I think I just had, it was just sluggish to it, you know. It's just a cool thing, like, like I've said before, it's not, it's not that difficult, like, compared to other similar styles of challenges. I think it's pretty attainable for a lot of people, which I actually think is a positive, and it's really cool, you know. It's a cool challenge. I mean, I know I'm not supposed to say this, but I had the most fun at the bike race, but it was because I, was, I wasn't I was really competing, and I got really drunk, and it was just like really fun, you know? Like, it was, like, if I didn't feel good, I just like slowed down, because I didn't like care, and I just like stopped and talked and like drank a beer, you know? Like, because I have that, I have that like competitive nature with running, like I, I, I have to push, you know? Like, which is actually like kind of cool because I actually now that I think about it, that like I mean the series obviously caters towards runners, but runners should know that the bike race is like tons of fun. I got I got third today, right? Yeah. So two seconds, a first, and a third. I let him win. I just wanted a third because I haven't done it yet. 
I'm going for the cycle, trying to hit a cycle. At the race meet? Yeah, I mean, the, the competition was pretty light this year. Uh, I think I was able to sneak in and win the Whiskey Man series. Uh, I mean, it's never going to be a thing where like hundreds of people are doing it. You know, but... like, literally, I think if anybody else does it next year, it's like it's kind of a success. <laughs> You know? And third place from Prescott, our very own, the one and only Michael Versteeg. Good job, uh, Michael. I'm from Flagstaff now, but I grew up in Prescott and the Whiskey Man series. Yeah, Whiskey Off Road and the Whiskey Road Marathon. My name is James Madsen. I'm from Flagstaff, Arizona. I decided to go after the series because uh, one of my heroes is uh, Mike Versteeg. Um, he's just one of the coolest people in the world. Uh, <laughs> and uh, no, yeah, he did it last year, and uh, I was wanting to do both the other races and. Uh, yeah, this year it worked out. Yeah, Mike Cruz. I got the 88K Whiskey Basin tomorrow. See how that goes. A buddy of mine, Mark LaBelle, you know, we kind of did a, a beer bet to do the whiskey series. My name is Tandy Sherlock, and I heard no other women may be trying, so I want to try it because to be the first, you can never get that back again. If I don't try it and somebody else does it next year, then I'll have missed my opportunity. I think last year when, when Mike did the Whiskey Man series, it was like, I mean, Mike's from Prescott, and uh, I'm just pretty competitive. And I was like, I want to, I want to do the Whiskey Man series. Just his stories of drinking whiskey at every race and things like that um, motivated me. It's like, if I'm in Arizona and I have the time to train, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, Prescott's a really great little uh, western town. Uh, tons of fun little bars and antique shops and just kind of mom and pop stuff. Uh, tons and tons of trails, uh, great rock climbing and great weather most of the year. <laughs> uh, for me, I like rye whiskey and anything cheap and in plastic. Um, it's probably my favorite. Um, I drink a lot of that in the shower um, alone. So. I hope it'll become something. Uh, it feels really cool to get to do it. Like I said, Prescott's one of my favorite places and I've always wanted to do the mountain bike race and the marathon for years and uh, this year I get to finally do them. And I think it's way cooler. Uh, the lead man's a pretty cool thing, but it's quite an effort to be up in Leadville, I think, all summer. And Prescott's a beautiful place if you live in Phoenix or even in the Southwest in general. So.
<laughs> For sure, way harder. Humbled every time, every time. Got recovered from a low point about halfway through and uh, finished 25 minutes faster than last year, so that's good. <laughs> I saw the buckle on Facebook and I had to have it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so I'm doing the whiskey off-road 50 mile mountain bike race and I just started riding mountain bikes like a month ago. So this place is beautiful, so it's a good excuse to get up here. You know? Whose fault is it? It's Clint's fault. <laughs> Last year, he, uh, he heard I that. I point your hand and point somewhere else. And he said, first. he said, wouldn't it be cool to do that? Let's do it. So, <laughs> I got this guy to do it. How many bad ideas have we had drinking beer? <laughs> I actually don't spend a lot of time up here. It just happened to be a, a good location. You know, I can't go up to Colorado and do the whole Lead Man series. So this is accessible, and I get to do it with a bunch of people I know. And, you know, the race organizations are always great for all three events, so I don't have any any reason not to be up here to do this. And yeah, maybe I'll get attached to this area. Uh, my name is Thomas Arnold, and I live in Prescott, Arizona. And I rode the 50 mile single speed to finish today. Had a great time. And next week I'll be running the Whiskey Row Marathon. This is part of like the Whiskey Man series. And uh, I'm uh, I'm the Hike Shack's Whiskey Man this year. So once I heard about the Whiskey Man Challenge, I'd already done it when I was 29 before it was official. And no one knew. And so now was, as soon as Versteeg was like, I'm the Whiskey Man, I was like, I'm gonna do it. So it was sort of like local, like local status. Honestly, so. and they paid my entryway, entry fee. So. Well, the first one I took, I was like, oh, fireball, not that one. So I grabbed a different one. It was like, oh, fireball. So I grabbed this one. It's like, oh, fireball, like. All right, I'm out of here. The guy was holding out Fireball in the bottle at the first place, and I was like, do you have something different? And he's like, oh yeah, we've got Jim Beam. And I was like, perfect. And I just like grabbed it. They gave it to me. You didn't tear your shirt off. No. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Oh, you're probably being like bike today. Time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what your bike time was. Neither do I. Do you know? <laughs> I think it was like five and a half. Mm -hmm. I think you beat it. Yeah, brother. <clears throat> it's hard out there, but really impressed. Uh, all my brothers and sisters put forward a great effort. Clearly, been eating their vitamins, saying their prayers, and I uh, was really honored to be part of this. Uh, and I'm the man who made wrestling famous, so. It's a pleasure to partake in a different sport and uh, see what it's made of. Drink a lot of whiskey. It's fun. It's, it was actually a lot of fun. It was like really hard, and the uh, last 10 miles were super fun. Had a few shots of whiskey, and that uh, surprisingly made the downhill a lot more fun. Any crashes? Oh, yeah. I see I got some blood on your shorts. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. The day when uh, it was rough, hey, thanks, it was rough, but it was fun. Yeah, it was. My uh, I had some, uh, some issues with the bike. This is my eighth time doing this. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is this is the first ever um, endurance event I ever did. I'm stoked for this. I'm I'm so happy that that you took all three of these races and just made something out of them. I was watching Mike last year do this. I, I didn't think someone would be able to do something like this. I mean, that someone would actually do all three. But Mike did all three, and then um, Clint threw it by me and said, I want to do it. I couldn't let Clint do it alone.
Yeah. Pretty tipsy right there. Yeah. This is the first year I haven't had this I just wanted to do something different and uh it definitely fit that bill and the bike pushed me way out of my comfort zone. I didn't really train for it and I didn't really know what to expect and riding those trails is way different than riding the ones in Phoenix. So uh, yeah, I was scared on that part. I was actually at a certain point didn't know if I'd be able to do the run. Took a few hard falls and didn't know how I was going to recover but did some speed work on Monday and Lex K felt great and all the bruises healed up and yeah, it was awesome and like watching like Mark go through it and he finished right behind me in the bike and meeting some new friends. It was super awesome and I'm starting to like trust it a lot. That's cool, like the first man and woman to do it are both from Prescott. As it should be. That's, that's a very appropriate. As it should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Get a tattoo. Get a tattoo. If I was down here, that'd be it. I'll go watch you do that. I'm anti What's this job? Uh, Whiskey Woman? First <laughs> I'm gonna call out Ashley the Rabo no, Ashley Raboda. I'm gonna call her out on the camera. She said she'd do it, so it's cool. Yeah. One of, that's gonna be my most prized possession, I think. Thank you very much, Priscilla. Yeah. Whiskey man senior. <laughs> whiskey master. Yeah, whiskey master. Thanks, Jamil. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you bet. 